Next on the Broadway show, it's the summer of George. Tony Winner and TV legend Jason Alexander's here to talk about making his Broadway directorial debut with The Cottage. Plus, we're taking a walk with one of the stars of Back to the Future, the musical. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. It's a sizzling summer on Broadway with Tony winning shows on stage and new plays and musicals on the way. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Glad you're here. Welcome to The Cottage. It's a hilarious and star-studded new play from director Jason Alexander. I got to know the TV icon who's putting it all together. What made you decide to take this on? <laughs> I loved it. You know, it is a takeoff on the very behaved Noel Coward plays. But you could absolutely see the fun of it and the tropes of it. It has a bunch of silliness, but it also has a lot of stuff that's really about things. It's a bit of a feminist story. It, it's turning a kind of a play that was always dominated by the men and having it dominated by the women and, and sort of traveling through their arc of this circumstance in a different way. Broadway hasn't done a lot of flat out comedies for a while and, and I thought that would be just a glorious thing to be part of, to do something that makes people laugh and smile. You've done so much, but does Broadway always give you that, I don't wanna use the word tingle, but that like, oh my gosh, it's, it's Broadway. I mean, it just, I feel like this is always something where, I mean, when you come back to it, does it feel new all over again? It is not lost on me that this was where I was hoping my career would end up. And when I was, when I got the notion in any real sense of maybe I'd like to be an actor, my fantasies were not about film and television. They were, I grew up in New Jersey, so I was going, how do I get across that river and work in those theaters? And I reasonably thought it would take quite a long time to get there. And then I was lucky enough to start that journey when I was 21 years old. So every time I come back and I get on these stages or I even just get in this area of town and I go, I get to work here. It's not a tiny club, but it's not the biggest club in the world either. When you, when you were inspired by those particular fantasies, it, it just, it, I, I don't really know how to sit with it because it was a fantasy. I, I mean, I just didn't think it was gonna happen this way. And as a director, I mean, I've been directing for 30 years, you know, but um, I didn't think I'd get to, I mean, you don't, you get to Broadway by doing, you know, you're the head of an artistic directing company and you push something out and you get it here. Or and you've started when you're much younger and you've built your career to this point. But I'm 63 years old and I'm making my Broadway directorial debut and it's like, what is happening? It's, it's, uh, it's not lost on me how extraordinary it is. This cast mm -hmm. that has come together for this show is uh, particularly uh, funny and fabulous. How do you feel about uh, this going forward and working with them and what each one brings? Because everybody brings their own you know, They're, life before this. Bet. I mean, I've got five Broadway veterans and one <laughs> newbie, but not new to comedy. I mean, it, it, it's great. They know the theater. They know comedy. They, they, they come bearing gifts and, um, and frankly, insight and points of view. You know, I, I would love to tell you, oh, it's all me and I just, but it isn't. And, and it never is, I don't think, for any um, director. They have brought things to the table. They've asked questions. You know, they, it, it is a true ensemble show. All shows are to some degree, but the comedy of this, it, it isn't a star vehicle. It all has to work, it's in this, very stylized period thing. They all have to nail it. If somebody doesn't get it right, then it kind of looks half-baked. Right. So to have six individual stars mm -hmm. working together as a team for a common cause is always, makes me very happy. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Back to the Future the Musical is on Broadway this summer. So let's send it out to Charlie Cooper. I am so excited for you because I feel like this is a full circle moment for you. I know. Because you made your Broadway debut over a decade ago yeah. at the Winter Garden and look, yeah. you're back. I'm back home. Literally back <laughs> home. What does that feel like? Oh my gosh. It does feel like a full circle moment. Like I was so young. I made my Broadway debut as Sophie. It was my first Broadway job, first Broadway show. and. 
To be coming back now feels really special and playing this role that I love so much on the same stage. Yeah, I feel really lucky. I love that so much. This show is just huge. Yes. Everything from the yes. lighting yes. and the illusion <laughs> and the singing and the dancing and it's, it's just, it's, it's huge. It's yeah. incredible. Tell me a little bit about what like brought you into this and made you want to be a part of this. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? I got the first call for my audition. I was out of town closing uh, my last show that I did. And I got the call and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen that movie in years. And I sat down and I watched the movie and just re-fell in love with it all over again. And especially yeah. the, the role of Lorraine Baines. I was yes. like, I must go in for this. You were lucky enough to meet the actual, like, people who were part of the movie. Yes. What was that like? Oh my God, are you kidding? It was incredible. I died. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Leah Thompson came to our opening gala night and came on stage after and found me and we hugged and then she said some really nice words after her. I was like, I mean, I was freaking out. I was like, I've seen her performance so many times. Yes. She's such an icon. I was, yeah, I was thrilled. Any good advice or any good, like, what'd you get while in her presence? You she, clean anything I mean, from her? She's amazing. She's like, she's cool. She's grounded. She's such a great actress. And like, she has such a cool spirit and energy. And I was just like, I don't know, I was like soaking it up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I have to ask you, yeah. if you could be transported back to any decade or any time period in your life maybe, when would it be and why? You know, I want to go back to the 90s. Yeah, and same. I want to be an adult in New York City in the 90s. Because <laughs> oh. I, I was very young and like, I want to know what that vibe was like. Because I, yeah. like, I feel like it was a cool time. When you were a kid, because you kind of just referenced like childhood, yeah. was there one show that really captured your attention and made you feel like, this is what I want to do? Like, I a know- A musical? Yeah. Oh, yes. You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. I saw that on Broadway starring Roger Bart. No. Yes, as Snoopy. Oh my God. I think I was 11 and I that show like, I was like, oh my gosh, I must do this. Yes. Roger Bart was so iconic in that role and my mom and I just loved it so much. and. I like marched back to my middle school and I was like, we're putting on You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. I'm <laughs> playing you know? Sally. No, but <laughs> I mean, me and all my friends, I was like handing out scripts. I was like <laughs> casting everyone. I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. Well, listen, we're here. We're back at your home. Oh my gosh, so soon, yes. And listen, break a leg. Thank the show you. is so good. Thank you so much. Everyone and their mom needs to come and see Yes, us. we're having a blast. Yes. And I hope audiences are too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, off I go to work. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Welcome to Jaja's African Hair Braiding. It's a story of a bustling Harlem salon featuring an eclectic group of West African hair braiders. We caught up with the stars. Jaja's African Hair Braiding, when I heard the title, when I learned of the play and read the script, I was, I immediately thought I need to be a part of promoting this show. I need to be a part of helping to bring this vibrant story, this vibrant community to life. And I just wanted to be a part of cultivating the audience that would come in, inviting this audience into our little tiny world of theater and see that this is for you as well. You're gonna laugh for sure. It's a very funny play. It's very joyous. Um, there's gonna be tea that's spilled, tea that's sipped, uh, shade thrown, dance parties thrown. Um, it's just, it's a whole fiasco. And this play, it takes place over one like full day, which is a lot can happen in a braiding salon in one day. And you, and most people don't really get to experience that um, unless you're getting a very particular style, which we will model in this show. These women exist yes, in space, yes. in time. They are giving, loving women who are a part of this culture. Um, I mean, if you see a black woman with her hair braided, that woman who did her braids, I mean, it is, it is, it's ancestry. It's, it is a part of our lineage. Yes. And um, I just hope that people begin to realize just how important they are. These are the people that make the city what it is. These are the people that keep us running. You know, when you see someone on the subway with a fabulous looking hair, this is a part of the world that they more than likely tapped into 
for that moment. I really hope that people also really meditate on the dignity of otherness, like quiet dignity of otherness. You know, the things we don't see, the fact that somebody can come into a braid shop and have their hair done, leave feeling fabulous. I mean, think about all the ways that people help us look our best yes. and how we kind of take it for granted. Mm -hmm. That quiet work, that quiet dignity. So I hope that it just asks people to be more measured in the way, that, the ways in which they extend grace and humanity to other people. I hope also people leave with joy and a sense of our resiliency and the fact that comedy is the way that we've been able to get through quite a bit and that these are three dimensional human beings. The Broadway show is back in just a sec. I'm Leandro Gaston and I play Anne Boleyn in Six the Musical, and you are watching The Broadway Show. Welcome back to The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. She's forever in blue jeans, Robin Herter, starring right now in A Beautiful Noise, the Neil Diamond musical. Balwan Torek sat down with Robin. I know that you are someone who lives in gratitude, especially about your career. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this is such a great moment for you because, you know, during the pandemic, Moulin Rouge, you were obviously yes. were Nini in Moulin Rouge, it shut down and you got a Tony nomination while you were at home. That, that just suddenly happened. So wild. While you were waiting for the show to come back. Tony Awards happened, the show finally came back. Now you're back on Broadway in a new musical, A Beautiful Noise. I know that you don't always assume the next job is right around the corner. No, never. Once I left Moulin Rouge, I was so prepared to just be a mom, take a seat in my house in the woods and just enjoy life, mm -hmm. uh, give my body a rest finally. But when this audition came up just two months later and then I saw what the role was and I was like, I think I should probably go in for this. And I did and it happened so quickly wow. and then all of a sudden within three days I had another Broadway show. And that's when you just kind of, um, you release and you throw your hands up and say, take it away, universe, <laughs> because I'm not going to fight it. I'm like, clearly this is meant to be, and I'm so grateful, and I'm going to embrace it and go on another journey that was completely unexpected. Never in my life would I ever expect that I would be starring in the Neil Diamond musical. <laughs> right. I still laugh. It is the most fun I've ever had, and wow. it's the happiest I've ever been on stage. Why do you think this show is giving you all that? I think there's so, so many things. Number one, the people. Not every day does a group of people like right. this all come together in, in one environment and it just makes for a really enjoyable workplace. But also, the nature of this show, mm. I love shows that make you feel all the feels. Mm -hmm. And when people hear Neil Diamond, you know, the Neil Diamond musical, right. they're gonna be like, okay, sequins, and yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> you, you get the sequins, and you get the fringe, and you get the songs, but, you get his story as well, and um, a lot of people don't know it. Yeah. Mark Jacoby, who yes. plays Neil now, and his performance that he gives in this show, especially at the end, the audience isn't expecting that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we get to just give you exactly what you want, we flip it around, and we get to just embrace this glorious music and this amazing musician and get to sing together and dance together and hold hands and put our arms around each other and sway back and forth, and it's like, Anybody who does not feel that kind of flaming, sparkle joy that's happening at the end of this show, then you don't have a soul. You do this uh, fantastic number, Forever in Blue Jeans, mm -hmm. which is a Neil Diamond song I never thought twice about. Really? I never really had a moment with it. Now I'm obsessed with it because of you. I'm most obsessed with this number than anything else on Broadway right now. I, really? I, I, yes, I wanna go see Aww. that number. I'm gonna come to the matinee with you and just watch that number. It is so it is so good. I was screaming at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it so much. Thank it was you. so good. It I was mean... amazing. You play Marsha, Neil Diamond's second wife. Yes. Who he is no longer married to. Nope. And Neil Diamond is around. Yep. He, he's mm -hmm. very much involved yep. in the process of this. You're playing his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Is that odd? Is there any? Is there uh, anything? Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's and and there's a lot of her story 
in, in the musical. There really is, yeah. which I, I wasn't expecting. I have to say, I, this was very intimidating for me yeah, because sure. the roles that I've been able to create on Broadway have been um, made up. <laughs> <laughs> and they've right. not worn a lot of clothing yeah. and they really like to yeah. dance and express themselves. So this one, I'm like, hmm, not only do, do I get to wear clothes in this show, um, <laughs> I'm creating a, a, a real human that's mm -hmm. here, that's alive. And with Marsha, um, there is not a whole lot of information about her. She's, le she's led a very, very private life mm. since the divorce. and. She helped create this lifestyle, this Neil Diamond that everyone adores and loves, which kind of turned into a beautiful monster. And um, unfortunately, relationships are the ones that are sacrificed. And it was, you know, 25 years. Thanks for staying with us for this latest episode of The Broadway Show. I'm so glad you're here. It's Broadway's brand new farm to table fable. It's the new musical, Shucked. We're checking in with Beth Stevens at the new 42 Studios. Thanks, Tamsin. Shucked pairs Grammy winning songwriters Brandi Clark and Shane McAnally with Tony winning writer Robert Horn for a countrified fable with a whole lot of corn. I checked in with them as they readied this new musical for Broadway. So this is a brand new musical. People probably don't know what Shucked is about. Can you give us just a, a real quick idea? <laughs> we should be better at this by now, as many people ask what it is, especially with the title. I mean, mm -hmm. we think that the title is a funny pun or uh, just fun to say, but oh my God. How many times do you have to repeat it and repeat it? And then they say, oh, like oysters? And, you're like, and I always do them. I'm like, you know, shucking corn. Well, it's a fable. A farm to fable. It's about a, fic a you know a fictional town called well a county. It's not even a town. Cobb County, and it is surrounded by a corn wall. And what happens is the corn literally a wall a of corn. A literal wall of corn. No one has left. No one has ever come to the town. But the corn starts to die, and so their way of life is in jeopardy because everything is fueled by the corn. And so they have to make the brave decision to leave. And there's only one person who is, is brave enough to leave, and that's our heroine, Maisie. And she goes to the big city looking for someone who will help fix the corn. And I'll give this one little part away without giving too much. She meets a corn doctor who's a, really a podiatrist. It's just a comedy of errors from them. Maybe love is like a sea. A little sun is all it needs. We wrote songs that we really wanted to be able to stand alone outside of the musical. We were so intentional on trying to write hit sounding songs within this original musical. Songs that people didn't know, but they would feel like they did. My best friend, I'll be yours until the end. Blood is thick and whiskey's thin when we're together. Friend, my old friend, ins and outs and outs and ins. We've been family all our lives, but we'll be friends. Friends forever. You two are very well known for being good friends getting along. Tell me how you work together. It's special. I, there's nobody I work with like Shane. But I think what we really have going for us is that we have a respect for each other where we can say, pardon the pun, the corniest thing ever. And the other one doesn't shoot it down, riffs off of it and turns it into something great. We always preface with, this isn't it, mm -hmm. this isn't it. It's like, not this but something like this. It's a dream collaboration. I, I, I do get so emotional thinking about what this career, this life would be without her. You know, I can barely look at her when I talk about her, but we're so lucky that we found each other and the timing was so perfect because not only did we really help each other at a time in our country music writing careers where we both really felt like it was never gonna happen for us and we had been doing it for a long time. We met right at the right time that this came together and I feel like this will be our, our base legacy. 
We're excited to tell you about an awesome paid fellowship program for college juniors and seniors and recent grads who are interested in a career in theater administration. It's called the Black Theater Coalition Broadway Across America Fellowship, sponsored by the John Gore Organization. The program begins in January. The application process now open through September 29th. For more information, visit broadwayfellows.com. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.